Okay. Then let's try to apply it, this method. Let's take a look at some examples. And for our first example, let's take a look at something that we've already seen last week. Let's take a look at binary search. This was that clever way of searching in a sorted list. So binary search, this time I've written down the code in a real pseudocode format, but it's the same as last week. So if you still remember what it looked like last week, that's also fine. My first question is, do you remember what is the recurrence equation of binary search? So how many recursive calls did we have to make? And how much work was it in addition to these? this or these recursive calls okay okay so a and c are both quite popular and the difference seems to be either one or two recursive calls well remember that for binary search the clever method of searching in the list we only had to go to either the left or the right side of the list never into both so we only need one recursive call so answer a is the right answer here we need one recursive call into half of the list and there is some constant work in updating some parameters returning something calling a function stuff like this so the right answer is indeed and let me write it down on the Blackboard, because we're going to need it for the next one. It's good to hear that binary search is already worthy of yawning. There we go. So given that, my question is, can we apply the master method? And if so, which of the cases do I end up in? Is it more work in the leaves? More work in the root? Is the work evenly spread? Or, well, too bad, we cannot apply the master method, but, well, not to worry, we already knew that binary search was only log n work. Ah, lovely. You also seem to be spread about the different options. So, answer C is just about the most popular, equally spread. But let's see if we can figure it out. What I've done already is I've written down the template that you can use for any exercise that you can actually solve using the master method. We need to identify A, B, and Fn. Then we need to say something about this thing, n to the power log B of A. Then we need to say whether fn is bound by this thing in some way. We can conclude what case it is. And as a result, we can conclude the runtime. Assuming, of course, that we can apply the master method. So if I ask you a question like this, this is roughly the way I expect your answer to look like. And if you all make it look like this, that would make grading a whole lot easier. So let's see if we can figure it out. A. Well, A was the number in front of this T, so A is 1. B, well, B was this number that we were dividing by, so B equals 2. And Fn was this thing, so Fn is some constant amount of work. Now let's compute n to the power log B of A. So that's n to the power log 2 of 1. The log 2 of 1 is yes, 0. So n to the power 0, ah, OK. So just 1, which means that fn is exactly that. So we are in case 2 where the work is evenly spread. And as a result, 
Tn was, when the work was evenly spread, it was the work in the leaves, so n to the power 0 times log n. But n to the power 0 was just 1. So log n work. Ah, that matches exactly what we found last week. Well, hopefully we did it right then. So let me put up my slide with the different cases once more so that you can check that I did it right. Okay, well, let's do one more. So yeah, my an the answer is also on my slides. You can check it again at home if you want. Let's go for this one. This time I have nine calls, and these nine calls all use only a third of the input. My question again is, which of these things require the most time? Is it the leaves, the root, or is the work evenly spread? And let's find out. Okay. No spread this time. Overwhelming majority for the leaves. Well, let's find out if you're right. So, here we go again. A is 9. B is 3. Fn is theta n. Okay, so n to the power log b of a is n to the power the log 3 of 9, which of course equals... So this is n squared. Okay, um, so fn, which is only theta n, is upper bound by n to the power log b of a minus some epsilon, right? It had to be strictly smaller. Well, take for instance minus 0 0.1, I don't care. Right, then it's 1.9, that's still way higher than just 1. Uh, okay, if it was upper bound, then indeed it was case 1, where the most work happens in the leaves. And if it was case 1, well then, just the amount of time spent in the leaves was the bound. So, in this case, n to the power log b of a, which is n squared work for this function. And I hope you see that this is definitely a lot less work than all that repeated unfolding business, thinking of a step with k and then proving the whole thing with induction. 